It's time to heat things up a little on a cold day in Scotland. It's number 13, endothermic and exothermic reactions. We all know that some chemical reactions release energy in the form of heat. But what about reactions that do the opposite? I've come to this shopping centre in Edinburgh on a chilly Saturday to demonstrate endothermic and exothermic processes. Oh, baby, it's cold outside. Are your hands cold? Yeah. Right, and you've heard of these, haven't you, hand warmers? You haven't heard of a hand warmer? You haven't seen these? So when your hands are cold, you crack this thing inside and this makes your hands warm. You all see water turns into to ice, yeah? This is going to turn into something that will seem like ice, it will go more crystalline, but it will get hot. I'm going to cut it open like this. Bye. <laughs> this is right, here we go. I'm going to pour it into here. Right, so like, all you not know, that was pretty cold when you touched it, wasn't it, yeah? Yeah. Right? I'm going to touch it underneath. Cold? Yeah. Yeah, you feel like it. We need something to kick it off. For it to give off heat to warm your hands. So we're going to stick something in it. Right. Oh, what are you doing? That's not even ice. Oh, no. Oh, that's warm. It's getting warm, is it? But you said it was cold. So what is happening here? The blue liquid is actually a supersaturated solution of sodium methanoate. The liquid is so full of sodium methanoate that it's very close to becoming a solid. All it needs is for me to put in this wooden stick to start off the process and the liquid turns into a crystal. Because it releases energy, we call it an exothermic process. It's easy to remember because energy exits. But some chemical processes actually absorb energy. Check this out. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to try and get this to stick to that. So you need, you need to stick to glue. Glue? You could use glue. But has anyone ever been in a really cold place and they said, don't lick the pole? Yeah, they don't do it, you go skiing and you get stuck to it and that's just you gone, your holiday just finished because your tongue's stuck to this pole, yeah? Well, we're going to do the same thing with that. So I grab some of this. <laughs> Alright, now, put that lid back on. Alright, so you put in some of that. Alright, now, you mix it together. You see that smell? Really smelly. That's what ammonia is. That's John Thomas's feet. The ammonia is a byproduct of the reaction taking place in the beaker. For this reaction to take place at room temperature, energy must be absorbed from the surroundings in the form of heat. So much heat is being absorbed that it's freezing the water underneath the beaker. This is an endothermic reaction. Heat is taken from the surroundings and goes into it, so it's endothermic or endothermic. But that's how I remember it. Endo's like indo, and exo's like, well, exit. <laughs> okay, can someone hold this beaker, please? <laughs> yeah, huh? This has taken all of the heat out of the water and cooled it down. It's cold, isn't it? Right, so let me break that off. Javi, can't get off. Use this control. <laughs> Obviously, when you take heat from water, it gets cold yeah. and it turns into ice. Yeah. And that was an endothermic yeah. reaction. So why do you know oh, that's not like one last thing? It's water. 